welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. Only say the son of Nome is my name. Zim Road to 2023 is the name of the program. And we have today another Triple C member. Uh, Ned TC Pepe is a man that I've known for more than is it nine years, ten years. Uh, from his days with the MTC. Now he's with the Triple C and I understand he is the Secretary for International Relations responsible for Mad South. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Did I introduce you correctly and lay out your portfolio correctly? hundred percent. Okay. Um, we are going to the elections. You have this kind of portfolio. First, can you tell us what the portfolio entails so that we don't end up asking you things that you don't know about? Okay, thank you, Nicholas. Uh, as you say, my name is Nathis Pepe, the Secretary of International Relations in Marsal. Yeah. Uh, my role is very simple. As we approach elections, we call all diasporians, especially in South Africa, yeah. uh, to assist the party financially or otherwise. So your role is to link the diaspora with the party at home? Yeah, especially when it's part of that. Oh, okay. So yes. whatever you do is for much so. We do it nationally, but specific my position, I stay in my line, is much south. Okay. So I'm linking much south with diasporians, especially those who come from much south, oh. like you. <laughs> the son of Matopo, yeah. we always ask you to assist wherever you are. If you're a businessman, ask this financial. If you are Malaysia, care our regalia. If you just assist wherever you are. Oh, okay. That's, so, uh, for how long have you been holding this portfolio in the party? Uh, as you know, Triple C was formed <laughs> this year. So, uh, from previously, in MTC Alliance, I was holding the same position. When we moved to Triple C, I'm still on that position, liaising yeah. with the historians to support Triple C, especially in Mansa. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I love with Mansa. Okay, um, I have re reservations, of course, with when Triple C was formed, but I think that will be a topic for another day. Right now, we are we are going to the elections. We are hearing a lot um, of disturbing news. Um, the main one being that uh, there is a lot of political violence in Zimbabwe. You are here, you're speaking to the diaspora. Obviously, they might be interested, many of them might be interested in assisting the party. But at the end of the day, also, they are interested in knowing more about what is happening, especially in Matibirin itself, because, as you might know, uh, the diaspora is bearing the brunt of uh, the political upheavals in Zimbabwe. Many of them are here as refugees, many are here uh, as economic refugees as well. So we have political and economic refugees, but all of that uh, spilling of uh, the political situation at home so now when you talk about uh, Mad South, especially as you are linked with the diaspora, the first question that I want uh, you to ask, I mean to, to answer is, how is the situation in Mad South and as far as political tolerance, political intolerance and political violence uh, are concerned? As activists and as the citizens, we know that uh, ZANU-PF is using violence as a tool to intimidate Zimbabweans, uh, especially in Mad South. Remember, most of uh, our youth uh, are flocking into South Africa yeah. and uh, as economic refugees. But most of them, they are struggling. They don't have documentation. We try to assist them to get documents so that they will register to vote. And uh, we are looking forward for 23 other elections that 
most youth will they will vote triple C that just because they are keen for change. So moving forward, as much as much south, uh, we will make sure that we advise them to go in numbers. Remember, we are saying Porta with Botswana, we are saying Porta with. Uh, as we are in South Africa, <laughs> we are saying Porta with Botswana, we are saying Porta with uh, uh, Zimbabwe in yeah. So, most people who are going to vote, they will go via Mark South, going to. Yes. So, we are advising anyone. As we were saying, when it was done for Mkwazo, we were saying, go and register in Yeah. yeah to vote for, remember, we are not focusing on uh, that you must vote for councillors. We are focusing mainly on presidential campaign. Whereby, if you just jump in with water, you vote for President Chamisa, we are home and dry. Uh, we'll talk about that. It's quite interesting. I heard Chamisa talk about it as well. We'll talk about that. But my main concern is we are inviting people to go home and vote. There are rumors, no, not rumors, they, 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 they are your party as well. It's been very vocal about political violence. There's, I saw some videos in the claim that is from Makunje where Triple C members were being stoned. They, they were this years and were being stoned. So I want to understand the situation in one south from you as the Secretary for International Relations. Uh, do we have this kind, of violence, this kind of violence? Because for me to be able to go home, I must be assured that I'll go there, vote in peace and come back. As Triple C, we are a peace-loving organization. No, not from Triple C, from <laughs> Zanu Pierre. On the state, I can't speak for Zanukev. Zanukev is a violent party. Yeah. Uh, during by elections, our members were attacked left, right, and center. So, us, we are trying by all means to avoid violence. Yeah. And uh, we are not going to provoke Zanukev. And uh, we we are asking even Zanu PF guys to assist us not to provoke Triple C members. Uh, moving forward, uh, we will try by all means. If we you go to Zinu, go just go and vote. Yeah. Uh, leave your regalia. No one will know that you are voting Triple C or Zanu. Okay. But just vote independently. Okay. But vote for change. Okay, yes. that's interesting. And then we go to what you've already spoken about. You want people to go there for Chamisa. We don't care about uh, parliamentary elections and council elections. But uh, I didn't know, say we don't care. Yeah, but I say this if, if, if your money is, you can go to bed to just vote for Chamisa presidential. It's fine. Imagine someone maybe you are coming as far as. Gabuzuma uh, on side of Harare, but you can't be trusted. Just go in voting people, vote for president. Yeah, I want to understand how voting a president and because, of course, you're not saying that people should vote MPs and other stuff, but the emphasis on voting the president it will leave, let's say, a politically illiterate person or uh, a functionally politically illiterate, illiterate person to end up only voting the president, and we know how Zimbabwe is run uh, legally. The president gets elected, wins by a landslide, the other party gets two thirds, your president won't survive the next two weeks. So how, where is the logic? Because I would, I would believe that you are going for it all. You go for the council, you go for the MPs and then you go for the president because the, the logic is that someone who votes Chamisa will also vote Triple C in all these other spheres. If you can go to 2018 elections, yeah, I will take you back. You will recall uh, Chamisa was winning approximately in all constituencies, mm -hmm. but our MPs were losing. If you look at the presidential numbers compared to parliamentary numbers, you will see Chamisa was winning. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, in other words, uh, I see Chamis are uh, taking 60%, uh, more than 60%, yeah. and uh, ZANPF uh, coming uh, roughly 35%. In so, UPA, yeah, I'm saying let's say Chamisa is 90 percent president in the presidential yes, uh, yes, yes. what? Yeah, and Triple C gets 30 percent in the parliamentary constitutions. There is no way Chamisa can survive because parliament can impeach the president even now. So, where is the logic of you telling people to say, as a party, not you as an individual? Because I hate Chamisa was saying. Uh, our campaign is not a parliamentary campaign, it's a presidential campaign, and you're trying that now uh, here. How then will you expect him to be able to, are you going to suspend the constitution? And you also need the parliament again to suspend the constitution. No, so, I think uh, as Triple C, yeah. uh, if Charles wins as a president, he will be protected by MPs. Remember, Everyone is a MPs. Yes, see, that is a no, MPs. Whether you are a ZAN, whether you are a triple C, you are a citizen. So, yes. uh, Chamisa is a product of the citizens. I, I'm quite sure some of the ZAN MPs they will vote Chamisa. Uh, whether you like it or not, but it's a fact. Uh, it, it can't be televised, but uh, when they come, they go to Parliament, they will use their common sense. Uh, Chamisa is the future of Zimbabwe as a young man, and uh, if you if you are serious about Zimbabwe, I think you uh, you will vote Chamisa, and uh, most of the PF guys they will vote Chamisa. So you will be protected by citizens, unless if you say Zan PF, they are not citizens. Uh, I will say this. I'm a citizen myself. I'm yes. not saying people should vote Chamisa. I'm not saying people should vote Nanga or anybody else. Um, I'm a citizen myself. Uh, I'm not convinced as to why I should vote either Nanga or Chinese. That's me speaking, right? So uh, I believe there are many policy movements out there, but let's leave that. Uh, I'm still not convinced on why Triple C would emphasize on the presidential uh, vote more than the other. Uh, levels, council, you talk about the parliamentary, because at the end of the day, even if Chamisa were to win and Zanu PF wins two thirds, or they get the majority without even getting two thirds, it becomes a work paper because for him to be able to implement certain things, they should first go through parliament. And parliament can frustrate him, but we'll leave this uh, for another day. Um, right, when you have, do you have any? programs that you have implemented uh, in as far as much Southians who are in the diaspora are concerned to make sure that they participate even if those who cannot travel or like me to go and vote but at the end of the day I found participating in this struggle for the democratization of the world. Yes, we have already started uh, our members or I can say citizens who reside in Matsa. We always encourage them that know your councillor, know your MP. Yeah. In each and every ward where you come from, you can support them financially, you can call them, give them a message of support. Uh, when you send your luggage with my lighters, just write a note. A reminding your grandmother, your sister, or your cousin of what people see. Okay. Yeah. And, and how is the connection between the people at home, those who are in a position to vote, and those who are here in people like us? We haven't been home for some time because there needs to be this nexus for people at home to listen to people who are in the diaspora. There should be this connection between how is the connection between my South uh, people who are in Zimbabwe and those who are outside, if not even in South Africa, even outside South Africa. Okay, in my South, uh, for years back, uh, 
they were called inch for those who are in South Africa. It's not a new thing. And uh, uh, some people love uh, their problems so much. Yeah. And uh, they have got influence. As we speak right now, we have got quite a number of uh, candidates yeah. who are from diaspora. And uh, they are serving TPC very well. And uh, I, I will say he progressed it very well. They produce more than four councillors. Okay. In, if I can say in my south and Bulawayo. Oh. So I think the connection is very well. Okay, we well, remember in my south there were chairman in Jemiyama of yes. the Transforian, and he still said now he's going to Senate. Yeah. So we are proud of that. We yeah, we, we, we were one of the cousin candidates for Matopo. Yes. Matopo Mango was here last time. And he was speaking a lot of sense. Uh, his video is very, very much popular with the viewers. I think it's one of the it's most popular political agent we've ever had. Now, you've spoken about Hippo. He's from Hippo as well. Right. But also, uh, we need to understand that there are people from outside who are based here who have not been traveling home for some time. And I think um, we need to be convinced that there is this, there's going to be this kind of connection because it must be there for your programs to work. Uh, uh, actually, people from Matsau, they lost interest in politics. Yeah. But since we have got the young men now, new movement, they are starting to gain uh, that interest that maybe uh, he is the Messiah named Chamisa is going to help us uh, take up some care. Remember during uh, MTC times, we, we normally say God must go. Uh, we forgot to say something must go. Yeah. Now we are very clear. It must go and something must go. Uh, you can't talk about future of Zimbabwe with an eight-year-old uh, if uh, you are not mentally disturbed. Uh, you must vote for a young man who is having a future. Uh, remember, Chamisa uh, is a young man and they have got a vision. And uh, as we speak right now, Triple C is carrying the hope and the hopes and inspirations of many young Zimbabweans. Uh, uh, other than being young, because somebody else they will say, okay, he's an ageist, and an old person will say, okay, they don't value us as old people. This what person who is going to value us. Other than being young, yes. what is it? You say Chamisa is not a vision. Uh, not putting you on the spot, but just for you to explain to a layman like me that when you say it's got vision, other than being young, yes, he's young, he's two years younger than me, by the way. Other than him being young, yes. what what is it that is promising the people? Because people will not vote him based on the age, because a dictator who's young is gonna take us another, you can live for the next six years without I mean, going at the age of fifty-six. He died or he was removed at the age of 80 something, was around 90, I think, or close to 90. And there are people who have never seen any other president except in 2017 after the coup. And 60 years in the hands of, the, of a dictator is like eternity. So, fine, he's young. If he's a democrat, he's young, vibrant, then that's good. But if, it, if he's a dictator, a young dictator, it means he held for the rest of our lives, and we don't want that. So when you say he's got a vision, I want to understand, hear it from you, what is it, for example, that he is promising that this is going to happen, and that we should vote him based on? Okay. Uh, remember, Triple C is a citizen movement. Mm -hmm. So everyone is a citizen. Uh, under national uh, 
Nelson Chamisa, you will see all those guys who ran away from Zimbabwe <laughs> starting to flock in Zimbabwe. I think uh, Chamisa is good for everyone in Zimbabwe and uh, he will be inclusive in his government and um, Triple C uh, will accommodate everyone. If you knew, we will say you didn't go on for quite some time. Under new leadership, you will try to you start to gain interest and the investment will start to come in. If, if Zambians did it and the Malawians, what about us? We are ready. The Zambian president had some programs. The first thing that he did was to overturn certain institutions that were under underperforming uh, the executives. He cut the, the, the domestic debt. He changed the focus uh, of the nation in terms of economic threats. But now, being new in the position doesn't necessarily doesn't automatically say that you've got a new idea because in 2018, 2017, we got Emerson Nangawa, told us Zimbabwe was open for business, he told us a number of things, and if he came up with some ideas to re engage the West, we are now fighting to go back to the Commonwealth. I don't have uh, any hope in us getting back there, but at the end of the day, we might get back there. But at the end of the day, Nangawa began to kill people. We saw people being shot in August the 2018. We saw people being shot in just in January or February 20, 2019. That was because we celebrated the Nanga Court here. We had this belief as well that things are going to change. We had this positive thinking mind. Everybody else, including the West, they warmed up to him. But at the end of the day, because he told us he's got new ideas. So I need something tangible. But to just than just to say. Just because Chamisa is new, just because Chamisa will be getting in the position uh, for the first time, therefore, automatically, everything is going to be okay. That's what I'm, look I'm looking for, something tangible, that Chamisa here said this, and this is tangible, or the party position, these are our policies, this is what we're bringing. Okay. <laughs> At least uh, you accept that you were fooled. That yeah, you know, and I don't want to be fooled again. Okay. No, yeah, we are not fooled. <laughs> we are giving you hope as a yeah. Zimbabwe. Based on what? Based on, on, on the new door. Chamisa is coming with new ideas. Definitely. Can, 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 can you share know. some of the ideas, baby? And say, okay, this is a new idea. This one is happening. Chamisa has this. This is, uh, I'll give you an example of Moses. I usually give this example. Uh, when he went to the children of Israel in Egypt, I hope you're going to change at some point. Uh, he didn't just say, let's get out of here and go to a world where there's no farm. He told them about the land of milk and honey. So when they followed him, they were following milk and honey. Yeah. So now, Visualize that for me, or make me visualize what exactly it is that Chamisa is going to give us. You know, the investors uh, are scared to invest in Zimbabwe currently. Yeah. You can't take your real money and put it in Vitus Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, so, our policies will be friendly to investors, whereby your 500 plan, you can put it in a bank <laughs> and uh, you will be safe there. <laughs> but currently, under ZANU PF currently, no one is, wants to put money in the bank. Everyone is uh, spartelling. Yeah. Uh, there is no investment. When you look at your minerals, they are being looted. They, uh, left, right, and said, and no one cares. But uh, under Triple C, mm. under no administration of Charles, you will see everything done according to what? 
Well, can I? <laughs> I'll leave it there. Uh, I'm still not convinced, but as we say, they called you here so that you tell us about my solving as far as your portfolio is concerned. Um, you've spoken about uh, your plea to Zimbabweans, especially in the diaspora, participating at home. The EFF, for example, has promised that if Zimbabweans need assistance to go home and vote, they will be assisted, they can even have any passes. If you tried to reach out to them, to try and engage them in as far as the seriousness of that vow? Not yet, but uh, I think other uh, departments, they are busy with that. Our political leadership, maybe they will get it. Remember, they are not, uh, EFF is not helping uh, C members to go to Zimbabwe. Yeah, they say Zimbabwe. They are helping citizens, yeah. Zimbabwe citizens, to go at home and vote. So if we, if you journalists, they can mistake that and say they will be happy helping opposition, uh, we will see passes being uh, taken by the Zambia. No, 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 I'm not saying that's uh, yeah. uh, the opposition, because even Zimbabwe, it was one, one thing that Mandela didn't say, he didn't say go there and vote Zambia out of the electricity yeah. in. He said, Zimbabweans should go home and vote, and they must vote a party that is going to correct the situation. If they believe that the Zanu PF is going to correct the situation, they should vote Zanu PF. But now EFF just wants to assist, and so for them to be able to assist Zimbabweans, I'm asking you this question not because I believe people who are here are going to vote to but I'm asking this because you are participating in the elections that are coming. We're going to have some PF people here. We're going to ask them similar questions. We're going to have maybe maybe some people here and ask them a similar question. But I'm saying that when somebody extends a hand and say, Zimbabweans who are suffering in South Africa, go back home and for them, we are happy to assist you if you need our assistance. It cannot be policy moving alone going to EFF. It can be maybe an organization of Zimbabweans like Mapena can engage with them, but also political parties like Triple C, uh, Zalu PF, uh, any other party with Zimbabwe EFF. So that's why I'm asking you if, as a party, you are, even if you haven't reached out to them, if you are exploring such a, an avenue of saying, okay, not only EFF, any other South African organization which wants Zimbabwe to go back home, those who are registered to vote, please assist. Yes. South African organization, they are welcome to assist the Zimbabweans to go and vote. Okay. Yeah, in cities. And from where you are standing, now referring to what South and the Zimbabweans in South Africa, uh, do we have a higher number of a high number of Zimbabweans who are registered to vote? I'm not registered. I was home last month, but I didn't register. But uh, Fine, Zimbabwe have been traveling up and down. Do you are you in a position to maybe say with confidence that I believe that this time many Zimbabweans are going to are going to go home and vote without having to tell us what they, who they are going to vote? Yes, uh, I can confirm. Uh, uh, during uh, voter registration, we yeah. encourage many Zimbabweans to go and register to vote. And I'm um, quite sure come 23 August they will go back and vote. Yes. Uh, and then the other issue is the issue of employers because 23 August is not a holiday in South Africa. It neither are the days between. Now, the next question would be are you engaging with some of these companies which employ Zimbabweans? Many are in the hotel and catering industry, many are in the uh, construction industry, is there a, a, a plan by C to try and reach out to some of these employers to make sure that they afford Zimbabweans a chance? It's just a day to travel. You go there, you vote, you come back. Are you trying to, are you trying to engage them? Are you planning to do that in your life? Actually, uh, this is a sacrifice. Yeah. yeah, I'm expecting Zimbabweans to sacrifice one day uh, 
Charles 23 August to go and fought. Yeah, but again, go there. Vote whoever, it doesn't come out the way I wanted, and now I have to come back here again. Yeah, it, it, it does mean that uh, if you are sacrificing, uh, remember uh, we are not funding, yeah. and uh, Malema is promising passes. If someone sacrifices, is man to donate for you as a Zimbabwean to go and vote. You can even donate your, your one day salary and go and vote. Yeah, you can I assist can them. Donate my future because I can get fired. So that's why I'm saying, I'm not saying people should go, I'm not saying they should be sacrificed, but I'm saying they could be a softer living for them by political parties reaching out to their employers, not all of them, of course, but to say, okay, for those workers who are registered to vote, could we please help them? There's this kind of assistance that we've been uh, promised. Can we help them or have an assurance that at this company they're going to give us so many who are registered to vote, at this company they're going to give us so many that are going to vote before they even board the buses? You see what I'm saying? So that they get a, a soft lending when they come back. The employers already have agreed beforehand, we're talking about less than a month coming, beforehand to say, okay, we have 75 Zimbabweans or we have 150 Zimbabweans who are registered to vote and they have been given off by their employers to just go and vote and then come back. I think it's possible. No, we advise the, the citizens that they must ask their employers uh, for that day to go and what it will be a clear message to each and everyone uh, as an employer that Zimbabwe needs change and that they need change now. Okay. Uh, and then let's talk about some that south again. I'm a Zimbabwe in the transport. Let's say things go according to your wishes. Triple C wins the elections and the armed military agrees to end of power. I want to relocate. Go home. Is there anything that you, as Mark South Triple C, and with you as the conduit between Zimbabwe is in the diaspora, Mark South is in the diaspora, and the party you are promising us to get home to? In Mount South, I'm no longer talking about this, but I'm talking about now it's a personal it's, it's a personal, it's a personal <laughs> question to say people like me who are from Mount South going back home because we've been lived here for so long. Some of if I as I wanted to say are out of touch with a lot of things that are happening back home, but boom, triple C wins. Chamisa becomes president, the military ends over. I want to go back home. What are you guys planning for us? Yes, uh, whatever you are doing right now, yeah. if we are a businessman, if we are a journalist, we need you in Marsal to assist us. You must assist us in, in, all, the, in all corners. Whether you are a teacher, if you want to go back to Zimbabwe and a plus government, we are welcome. Yeah, but we, we are promising you good stuff. I'm 47. I'm 47. I need something. If you are a journalist, yeah. go there. Be a journalist in Gwanda, in Mapesa. But the not doing well as in Gwanda. No! <laughs> you will assist us on that. We, we, we are expecting you to play a key role in Matopo there. Yeah. Uh, since uh, I understand you were studying in Matopo, yeah. you spent your, your childhood years in Matopo, you will assist us there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the economy of myself, I was there, as I already said, in uh, last month, that is June. And what I discovered is that there are a lot of people are doing gold panning. Many of them are in the pockets of Zagopiev because they believe that 
if you guys come in, you're going to take away their minds. Or if Zanu PF were to lose, uh, it means that their hopes of getting rich and richer are up in smoke. But also at the time, there were many were also disgruntled that uh, most of these minds are controlled by the uh, Amashuruki. Some are saying that the army, especially the police, they can just take away a mine anytime. Uh, as a party, have you made some of these things? Uh, remember, those things are not legal. Yes. I said TPC will legalize things. So we, we are ready to govern. If you are governing, you must make sure everything goes into form. So whether I should with if they want to to open a mind, they will be free to open a mind, but illegal. And who owns the mines in what South right now? Is it people from what South or people from outside the province? Uh, and a new government, which means we must do audit. So, right but now, it doesn't matter who owns the mine, but uh, that mine must benefit uh, people from what south. But to me, I'm from what south. Yes. Uh, if you come from what north and take up a mine in what south and you want to employ me, I'm not benefiting, you are benefiting. Now, I, I, I accept that you don't know offhand who owns the mines in what south. But at the end of the day, we're talking about devolution of power, which has been passed and is now part of the law. I accept that we're going to do it, what it. Now, in a triple C government, are you saying that you wouldn't mind who owns that particular mine, whether it's a Chinese guy? who doesn't even care about environmental degradation, who doesn't care about the health of the people. Because if I own a money myself, myself, the first thing is I know that whatever environmental degradation that happens there, that is going to affect me. So I'm going to pull something back to make sure that uh, issues like climate change are addressed, issues of people's health and from the fumes that come out of the mines are going to be addressed. I'm going to make sure that Clinics and hospitals there are going to be built and the roads there are going to be improved. But if somebody comes from, let's say, China, let me talk about China, comes from China, they mine here, they're here for the diamonds or they're here for the gold. When the gold runs out, without them investing back there, they move on to the next province. I'm happy you are touching the weaknesses of San Pierre. No, I'm not talking about Zanu <laughs> Those are the weaknesses of Zanu PF, yeah. whereby everyone can do whatever he wants, wherever he wants. But uh, under the new government, yeah. that will be the past. So I, 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 I promise you, uh, since you are touching mining, yeah. uh, mining is the backbone of our economy. So we'll be keen to know who is doing what and where. So in Mark South, yes, we have got mines everywhere. And uh, we have got these uh, summer summers. Yeah. But uh, uh, remember, some of them, they are government sponsors. Yes. And uh, ZANPF is benefiting <coughs> through that. Yeah. But uh, our people are not benefiting. So, if there is a mine in, in Mapisa, we are expecting that mine to do something to the community, mm. but it's doing for ZANPF. And uh, that mine must generate uh, employment, but uh, as we speak, uh, people are flocking to South Africa, Botswana, some are going to London looking for employment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then um, the other thing, you said your party belongs to the citizens. That includes this is Amazamas as well. You may not be happy with the way, the way they are doing this mining. I'm not happy as well. I don't think they are happy themselves because 
there is commotion, they can lose their minds anytime, or some of them are using, are, are mining in disused mines, with mines which are really dangerous. They don't have the relevant equipment. You need to, they are buy in as well for them because I, I think they don't need to be threatened that if Triple C comes in, we're going to lose this. What is your assurance to them that if you come in first and foremost, everyone wants that wants to do away with lawlessness, and there's a lot of lawlessness there. But what assurance are you giving them that even if you were to take over, they are not going to lose uh, their sources of income, although you're going to regulate this uh, mining to make sure that they benefit even more, and that uh, even if you have taken over, they are going now to be assured that nobody is coming to take this money from them. What assurance is so that they end up buying in to your vision as a party? As a party, under Triple Z government, each and every citizen is safe. And uh, whatever you are doing is going to be legalized. And uh, when it's legalized, that's when you will see that the son of PF was uh, fooling us that we are the Samasamas, uh, uh, we are Korokoksas, whatever the term they use, uh, but they will be uh, really minors, respected if you are doing it legal. Especially in my south, and no one will chase anyone away, but everything must be done legal. We are expecting that uh, mining sector to help Zimbabweans, help us all. Yeah. Uh, we are now drawing to the close, uh, to the close of this interview, but I want you, using your portfolio, to address Zimbabweans, especially those who are in the diaspora right now, about participation first in the election and the assurances that we have or whatever efforts are going to employ in making sure that they go home to vote, do it safely and then come back to continue working in South Africa. Should that be a need for them to come back? Because we need, we need to look at both sides. And also to promise them that in the event that Triple C wins, what is it that you are promising them, especially those like me and her who are from WhatsApp? So I want you to address us. I'm um, now that other side. I want you to address us. Give us your promise. I'm saying, say your Triple C vision to my South people who are in the diaspora. First, concerning the elections that you may lose. And next, concerning the elections that you may win. In the event that you win, this is what you promise them. In the event that you lose, this is what you promise them. But before we get there, this is what you are promising them in as far as the journey towards achieving democratization or towards 23 August 2023 is concerned. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, to all Mark South people in diaspora, 23 August is around the corner. We urge you to assist us as a movement to talk to your relatives back home, talk to uh, your friends and colleagues back home that 23 others they must they must vote freely and fairly they must vote for change and they must assist each and everyone who is a candidate uh, right now especially those who are in diaspora uh, whatever you get try to assist your ward councillors, MPs, and everyone by donating something, especially those who will be uh, party agents during 23 August election. Uh, they need something to eat. They need something uh, to assist their families. Try to assist in whatever way, uh, as much south, uh, 
I know most 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 South, most South guys are in diaspora, and uh, they use paid reporter post, and uh, they are paying a lot of money uh, in border post, toll gates, and uh, they are paying insurance money while they there is nothing to insure. Uh, we know they are crimes. And the new government will try to assist and make that border conducive to Zimbabweans, especially for those in Mad South, they will be helped decisively. Okay, um, I know you deployed in every parliamentary constituency. Did you deploy in Mad South in every council seat or council wide? Do you have candidates? Do you have candidates in every ward in Masa for cancer? I, I, I know where you are coming from. No, yes, <laughs> accidentally, accidentally. Actually, as a part we deployed candidates uh, in entire Masa. Okay, uh, but through Zek shenanigans, we end up not putting candidates in some words. Okay, how many, how many, or how many of them roughly? Yeah, four. Only four? The entire month so it's only yes. four that you did for. Yes. And how many do you have uh, double candidates in months? No, 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 I cannot say uh, double candidates. In months we are a clean progress. Okay. Uh, we are very clean, very smart, and uh, uh, in parliamentary don't have double candidates. Okay. Yes, we are very clean. Cancel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you still believe right? No. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I thought we don't get double candidates in Oh, yes. Ah, okay. Yes. No, that's good. No, uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm a Zimbabwean. I'm praying for change post 23 August 2023. If it's Triple C, that I'm not saying that I'm supporting Triple C. I don't know if it's a okay, if it's triple C, it's Apple that is going to bring change, but I'm praying for change in 2023. So that means I'm wishing you the best in the coming elections. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> there you are, ladies and gentlemen. Zim Road to 2023. Our guest today was Nettie Pepe, Triple C Secretary for International Relations, responsible for North South. He's graced our show. We expect many more other candidates from different parties. This is not a triple C program. It's not a ZANU PF program, but it's a program open to every parliamentary candidate or every uh, council candidate, every presidential candidate, or anybody who is interested in the Zimbabwean elections, which are coming on the, 23 of, on the 23rd of August, 2023. You might be a party official. You might be a candidate. You might be a political analyst, you might be a general Zimbabwean who has something to say in as far as the coming elections are concerned. This is your show. Get in touch with us. You can WhatsApp me on 073-962-3075. That is a South African number. Or you can email novempolicy 90 digits at gmail.com and we will uh, reach out to you. You can as well go to our Facebook page, AVG News, and send us uh, your contacts there or contact us there, and we will make sure that we reach out and we organize an interview with you. We don't care where you are. We are based in South Africa, but we also can travel to Zimbabwe should there be a need to go there and interview you. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it.